Hello and welcome back to Newcastle Fans TV. It's with the NE29 boys for scoring the players for Newcastle's last game of the season as Fulham versus Newcastle. It was made like a relegation decider only six weeks ago, but we've ended up finishing 16 points clear of them. Can you believe it? Liam, welcome to scoring the players. How have you been? I've been all right, you? Yeah, not too bad at all, man. Not too bad at all. Um, Martin Dubravka, uh, Newcastle's number one goalkeeper. Um, very commanding today, wasn't he? A lot of crosses, a lot of you know straightforward efforts at him, um, and a clean sheet, which is fantastic. Yeah, I, I don't think he really tried. He, I don't think he was really tested, was he? He was a bit of a Fulham's front line was quite poor, if I'm being honest. You know what I mean? So he had an Ari game. I would probably give him a seven if I was if I was scoring him. Yeah, I'll let you score him seven out of ten for Martin Tabaka. Remember, get your scores in the comments below. Um, as obviously Newcastle have finished 12th, can you believe it? Um, Jacob Murphy's next to me, right wing back. Um, has a little part to play in Joe Willock's goal with uh, getting out of trouble and getting a good pass towards Willock, who drives on and scores. We'll talk about him in a minute. Um, but fantastic, really, really good to see. Um, Joe Willock obviously get the goal from Jacob Murphy's small pass. Um, I thought defensively he was quite solid, there was one or two little moments, but I think. He's going to get that because he's still getting used to this position. But Newcastle won a game as well, which helps. So I'm going to go 7 out of 10 for Jacob Murphy following that uh, performance this afternoon. Um, it might be a problem position. Will Newcastle spend big money on, or spend money rather, on a right back or a right wing back this summer? It'll be very interesting to see what happens. Um, Liam, Emil Kraft. Um, we've thought about Kraft and Mankio as right backs, but Emil Kraft has been in a back three. And back to back clean sheets for Emil Kraft um, at Newcastle. Um, how do you make? How, what did you think of his performance this uh, this afternoon? It was good. I, I, I think it just refers back to what I was saying about Bravka. I don't think they were really that tested with there. I think he done he done what he had to done. Like um, he done everything, all the simple things well. So seven out of ten for me. Seven out of ten again for Emil Kraft, which is yeah. it's good to see. It's good to see the defenders get a clean sheet, though, isn't it? Because I've seen a graphic that only Sheffield United have had less clean sheets than us this season. Yeah, it's obviously um, it is it is good. Obviously, previously we've been like this goals galore, but at the back we've been shaky. So if we can keep it up going forward, you never know. We might win the league next season. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you saw in the fan reaction, but we had a made like little trophy. Finishing 12th and above Wolves, who would have thought we'd get something like a little bottle like that? <laughs> it's not in the Premier League, but it'll do. Uh, Federico Fernandez, I thought he was really, really good. I think he was, I think him and Dummett were slightly better than Emil Kraft this afternoon. Um, I, it just seemed like it didn't matter who Fulham were going to play up front. Federico Fernandez looked very, very comfortable today. Leader of the pack in terms of the three defenders. Um, I'm going to go eight out of ten for Federico Fernandez. There's still no confirmation, Liam, of him signing an extension or having a one-year extension on his contract. Um, are you slightly concerned about that? Uh, no, I think his time's up at Newcastle. Me, like I think he's next season. I think um, he, I don't think he'd probably be able to keep up with it, if I'm being honest. I think I think he's shown at times this season he's, he's been outplayed. And obviously his experience is great, but you need legs and you need energy. And I think people will just find him out next season, if I'm being honest. I think we need a, re a new centre and a half. Yeah, I don't think that is a position we need to strengthen, especially if we lose Florian Lejeune properly, because I know he's been on loan this season. It seems that Newcastle don't really want to keep him. So that is a position I think Newcastle will look at. Getting your comments who you would like to see Newcastle go for in centre half. And do you agree with me or Liam in regards to Fernandez? Because it, you know, he has been, I'd say maybe inconsistent is probably a word I would use this season, but generally on the, as a whole career for Newcastle, I think he has been, you know, a solid seven out of ten uh, for Newcastle. Uh, Paul Dummett's next for you, uh, Liam. Um, I picked him out as probably what, one of the better players today. I just think he's just a block everything today, especially second half when Fulham created a little bit more pressure when um, like towards the hour mark. But he, he's just never he's never going to be anything more than an eight or a nine. But he'll never be anything lower than a six. Yeah, I get what you mean. Um, he, he's one of these players where you where you sort of. You don't you, you want him in your team, but then it's like, how are you going to progress with him in your team? So, yeah, I think he was he was good the day, like from what I have seen. Um, so I think I'm going to give him an eight out of ten. But he's one of the like I said, he's one of these players where I think if we're going to progress, he sort of he, he becomes like a rotational player. Um, and I think you could say that about with a lot of the defenders, like Kieran Clark, 
Fernandez and Dummett. Like if we, if we want to progress, we need to get better players than them. If I'm being honest, who would who would you if you had to get rid of one of them? Just from your own personal point of view, who would you get rid of? Fernandez, I think I think he's he's a lot older, isn't he? Than the the two of them, and obviously Dummett's from Newcastle, so he, it's always good to have players from around the area in in and around the team. Do you know what I mean? To keep try and keep people, like the foreign lads to actually know what it means to play for Newcastle. Yeah, hundred um, percent. Matt Ritchie, left wing back for me. Um, I thought he was fine. He won the penalty. Won the penalty. It was a, it was a soft one, but you're going to claim for it. And it, it was a penalty in the end. I think any sort of nick in the box, um, it gets given nowadays. Um, and he's kept Jamal Lewis out of the team. And Jamal Lewis kind of get back into this team at the minute. You know, the, the conundrum is with Richie whether he'll still be here because obviously he was extremely close to going to Bournemouth. Um, in the January now, because Bournemouth are going to be still in the Championship, can they really afford the wages of a Matt Ritchie? Um, I, I, I don't really know. I think I think it depends on what the family situation is for, uh, for Matt Ritchie um, in regards to whether he'll still be at Newcastle next season. But if he's playing week in, week out, um, maybe he'll, he'll stay. He's got two years left, so he, he probably still got another maybe another season of Matt Ritchie, and then you could probably do a deal with a club. Um, with a year left on the contract, and this person he's probably cl- closer towards thirty now. So I think there's still one good season left in Matt Ritchie. But on today's performance, I thought he was steady, got his head in, got the nasty head injury actually um, in the second half, won the penalty. Um, I'm gonna go. What am I gonna go? I'm gonna go seven and a half. I don't think it was as good as Dummett and Fernand- uh, and uh, Fernandez today, but very consistent, very steady. Um, hopefully, continues that into next season. Um, it is quite interesting that since we started playing well, he's been he's he's the player oh, that's came in. How instrumental has he been, Liam? I think he's been massive. I think we're sort of lacking that leadership. That the, the, the we've got a lot of talented players, but I don't think we've got a lot of vocal players on the pitch. And I think every every time someone talks about him, all they say is he shout. He just shouts non-stop do you know what I mean it's like the Gordon Ramsay the teams effing and blind and the people but I think it's sometimes what you need do you know what I mean if you're not playing well or you're not playing up to that standard you need someone to in, in this level you need someone to tell you that you're not playing as well as what you should be and you should need to progress like improving the game yeah 100% he, I think you know people are saying you should be captain there's, a, there's an argument for that but um, a player that who was captain today, and I thought it was absolutely superb today, especially defensively winning the ball back, and um, obviously has got that that pass in him, and it did pay off a couple of times today. But disciplined performance by Captain Shelby today, Liam, and it's your it's your mark. And apart from the apart from Joe Willock, who obviously was getting a lot of the headlines, and, and rightly so, John Joe Shelby was just as instrumental today with Newcastle getting all three points. Yeah, he's he sort of had a rocket up his arse the last couple of games, hasn't he? Like I think he was going through a spell where we're debating why it was always John Joe Shelby in the middle, do you know what I mean? But I think this last couple of games has shown what he can be as a player. Obviously he's defensively he was spot on the day and I think he like last week or last not last week, Wednesday he was spot on as well. So I think off the day's performance, I think I'm gonna give him an eight. Um Maybe maybe a bit 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 harsh, but I think an eight an eight out of ten would be spot on for him. Um, it will, we just we need to see what he's going to be like next season, and obviously he needs to chip in with a few more goals, doesn't he? I think that's the main problem with with the midfielders. We haven't got a goal scoring midfielder that does it, that belongs at the club. Do you, think, the club do, you think, do you think that is a position that Newcastle are looking to strengthen central midfield because it has been over the years that they've tried to, you know, they try to get central midfielders. I remember Sumare from Lille. Who's had an excellent season, and I think he's been tipped to go to Leicester City in the summer. Yeah, just missed out on Champions League football. But Newcastle came with him a huge offer, about forty million pounds, forty forty five million pounds for Sumari. So, do you think that they have identified that as a long term problem, and they want to try and sort that out sooner rather than later? Yeah, I think um, we haven't replaced Kabai, have we? No, how many years ago was that? About eight years or something? Go yeah. five, five, six years. Um, I think Joe Willock's came close. To be in near enough the Kabai esque type of player where he, where he does score an assist, or well, I don't think what exactly assisted, like, but he scored a kind of few goals, so never mind. But I think um, they're all different type of players. But I think going forward, if we need to progress, we need we need our midfields to be scoring because it shouldn't always be down to the um, strike. If you look at Man City, their high schools, their highest scoring player was a midfielder. Do you know what I mean? It wasn't Aguero, it wasn't Gomez, so. I think it matters. Like you need your midfield to score to win, to win more games. Hundred percent. 
Uh, Sean Longstaff next for me. Another any 29 lad, Liam. We've got loads, haven't we? Um, <laughs> I thought his performance was fine today. Um, I don't think he's as good as Shelby or Willick, but he just, he, like I say, he, he's had a good end of the season as Sean Longstaff. I think, you know, I think everybody has, or 99% of Newcastle players have had a good a good end to the season. And I still think his best position is a number 10. I really do. I'd like to see him as a number 10 more often, but I don't think Steve Bruce sees him as that, um, which I'm a bit surprised about. But we'll leave that one for another day. But in terms of today, I can't really complain with how uh, how he played this afternoon. I thought he broke the play up. He was he was comfortable on the ball. He had, he had that little bit of time, which is which he, which he prefers. Didn't give the ball away in... Uh, in areas what, that he should do, um, which was good to see as well. Hopefully, he can get that cut, that, cut those mistakes out because again, this is probably his first full season in the Premier League as well, Liam. And if he can, can maybe learn from the mistakes that he has done this season, going into next season, we could see a much better Sean Longstaff. I'll, I'm going to give him a seven today, um, but I think I think another another full season in the Premier League, we'll see a better Sean Longstaff, won't we? Yeah, obviously we want the Sean Longstaff that man you wanted to pay fifty million for. Do you know what I mean? Obviously, I think last last season he was injury hit, and this season he's been hit and missy. Do you know what I mean? But like you're saying, he's he's been good towards the latter end of the season. But but it's just that we need the goals. Do you know what I mean? Like obviously he's, we've, we've got the players that can break or play, but you need to be chipping in with the goals. And I think if he puts his shooting boots on, we're going to be laughing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, hundred percent right. Brace yourself, Liam. You have got the man at the moment, Joe Willick. His last game for Newcastle in his loan spell from Arsenal. Eight goals since he's been here in January. Seven in his last seven for Newcastle. Scored a fantastic goal a day, driving from pretty much our own edge of the box, getting blocked on the other edge of the box for Fulham and putting it away. Fantastic finish. It's always a threat. Um, can Newcastle sign him? Um, they could do, but I don't think we are going to. Do you know what I mean? I think why not? If, nah, um, I think Arsenal are outpriced where then a team like Wolves will come in and snap them up because I don't think you'll get in the Arsenal team. I think they've got too many. I don't think they've got better players than them, but I think they've got um people that are more money and they're not going to let just the hundred grand sit on the bench, are they? Do you know what I mean? So I think I would. I'll give them a nine out of ten. If you if you scored two, I would have um. Would have given him ten out of ten, but it's interesting. Like, is he assisted both his goals? Because I did he not get an assist on Wednesday? <laughs> he assisted the day. Do you know what I mean? So, but um, it would be brilliant to have him back next season. But hopefully, if he does come back, hopefully he doesn't do a Kendi when he has a full season and he's absolutely shocking. He's just been so instrumental. But just on his just on his goal today, it was a fantastic finish, and he's just so confident in front of goal now, isn't he? Oh, he's brilliant. Like he's he's finishing he's probably. Second and none, probably he's probably up there with Callum Wilson. Do you know what I mean? Um, but I, I seen a stat the day, and he's he scored a, loads more goals than like he scored more goals than Mason Mount. And he's had half the season. Mason Mount's going to the Euros, so is Willock not with him? The shadow going to the Euros. Do you know what I mean? Does Joe Willock deserve a place on the plane to yeah. throw by the sound of it, which he could probably get from London in a taxi? Anyway, yeah. but um, I, I agree, Liam. I agree. I think you know what. Is he playing better than James Ward Prowse at the minute? Because if he is, does he not deserve a chance? I know James Ward Prowse has played a few friendlies for England, but I know they're slightly different players. But I think he's he's got something to offer. He really does, and I think um, I think Newcastle would be I think England would be crazy not to have a look at last few, few a few last few performances because I think he's been exceptional. Um, but Joe Willock, please stay. Just please, just stay. It'd be mint. It'd be mint if he did stay because well, he, he loved. But he's seen he's he's enjoying his football, do you know what I mean? Like him and Maxi have got like um a good partnership, do you know what I mean? So it'll be interesting to see if, if they had a full season together and fully fit how many goals they would actually get between them. We just need to send them loads of pictures of the time bridge. It seems to work with a yeah. lot of Newcastle players. So send them pictures of bridges, be fine. <laughs> um, Miguel Miron's next for me. Um only thing I'm a bit critical of with Miguel Miron is his final ball. I just think at times He's just got to pick the right pass, and some there's been times where he drives forward, and you think, "Come on, then let's make sure that you uh, make sure the next pass is good." Occasionally, well, I say occasionally, more often it, it's not as good. And there was a couple of chances that we were breaking on the counter attack, and that and that final pass wasn't great. Um, but I don't think he, I don't think he was the worst player today. I just think, I just think it's just something that needs to come out of Miguel Miron. You just need, there's something there because there is talent there, Liam. But um, I, I thought we we're going to give him a day. Um, 
I think him and Maxi were, were a bit of a threat to Fulham. Um, I'll go six. I'll go six for Miguel Miro today. Um, but if he can just improve on that final ball, Liam, he'd be getting eights and nines, wouldn't he? Yeah, like, like I've always said, obviously, he, he's good at running around and all that sort of <laughs> stuff. But I, I don't want him to do that. Do you know what I mean? I want him to be assisting and scoring goals. So I would prefer it if he was the laziest player. Like, you know, like Fat Ronaldo, he was like, you didn't want him to run. You just want him to score goals. And it's sort of like similar with this. If, if he... He seems like he, the, I think his problem is he's too quick. Um, and he obviously his brain probably is quicker than that. So, um, he just needs to slow it. I think he just needs to slow down, if I'm being honest. Yeah, he, he, he seems, seems a lot like Theo Wilcott. Theo, Theo Wilcott, um, he's got all the pace, but he hasn't got a football and brain. Yeah, uh, get your comments on Miguel Almiro and what do you make of his performance today? Um, next up, ASM, Alan St. Maximum. Um, Got, only got an hour today. I don't know if it was because he was um, he was a bit slightly injured today, Liam, because um, he was had a bit of energy coming into the game, wasn't he? And it, se- it seems like an hour was enough for uh, for Alan St. Maximum. Um, but I think it was a kind of a typical ASM performance, really. Um, you know, he, he had he had time and space on the ball. Um, probably just didn't do as well as he normally did. But with what he's done for Newcastle this season, you can let him have a bit of an off game against a, a poor Fulham side. Yeah, yeah, I think you can have an off game when um, there's no to play for. Do you know what I mean? I think that's probably a lot of players' play performances a day was thinking, well, we're going on holiday next week. Do you know what I mean? So I'm not really particularly fussed. But I think he struggled being probably the the striker of the team, if I'm being honest. I think last week, obviously, it was Joel or Wednesday. It was Joel Lynn that struggled. But I think he struggled massively the day. But he still, when he was on the ball, he was brilliant. Um, so I think I want to give him a 7 out of 10. Um, he's been instrumental. He, him, Callum Wilson, and um, Joe Willock have kept us in the league this season. Yeah, hundred percent. I completely agree with that. Without those, without those players, we'd definitely be playing Championship football next season. No doubt about that. Uh, first substitution was Dwight Gale. Again, people are saying that some people, or some Twitter accounts are saying that he signed a three-year deal. Um, it hasn't been hasn't been confirmed by the club. So that could have been Dwight Gale's last performance and uh, last uh, last appearance for Newcastle. I think that, I think one of the uh, one of the lads said on the um, on on the family action show said for his own career he maybe just needs a, a move and I think I kind of agree with that I think look he's been a good servant for Newcastle in particular the championship season in the first season in the Premier League he, he, you know he did a job for Newcastle hundred um, percent but I think maybe it's time for him to get a, have a new challenge you know maybe drop a division play consistently and maybe get a team up and try and stay in the, in, in the in the Premier League that way I just don't think he's what Newcastle need right now. Um, so I think that's probably the last last time we've seen Dwight Gale play in terms of his performance. He did play half an hour. Um, I thought he was fine. I thought he was absolutely fine. I'll give him the same mark as Miggy. I'll give him a six. Um, I just, I just, I, I just think maybe, maybe we just need something different now. Maybe we just need something different. Different, you know, Dwight Gale, Andy Carroll, etc. I just think we need some younger players. Give Ellie Anderson more more of an opportunity. Um, do you go and splash out money on maybe an Adam Armstrong at Blackburn? You know, you've made we've made our mistakes with them. Bring him back, give him an opportunity. You know, we've seen what Ivan Tony's doing at Brentford, and Newcastle are definitely going to um, ruin that uh, that player, uh, ruin the chance to have that player. So maybe get Adam Armstrong in for in uh, and get, get, give him a chance. He's scoring loads of goals for Blackburn in the Championship. Um, I'm giving you all the good, all the good players today. Bobby Schmeer <laughs> scoring a penalty. Um, um, came on for Emil Crawford got a slight injury. Um, what a penalty! It's cool, cool finish, wasn't it, Liam? Yeah, he's cool as a cucumber, isn't he? When he when he when he when he's playing well, but um, I was actually surprised he took it. I thought Richie or um, Winnick would have took it myself, unless they, unless they got subbed off. Um, but yeah, penalty spot on. Uh, so I think really because he scored, I think I'm going to give him an eight. Um, I don't I don't think he was particularly challenged defensively, like so. Um, it's, it's going. It, hopefully next season we will see the best of um, Shaw. Uh, where he's where he's scoring screamers and he's playing well because obviously I don't think he's had the greatest of seasons this season in Newcastle has he? No, I th- I th- again another player that hasn't been hasn't been confirmed that he's got a, 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 another year because he's technically out of contract. I think the club can activate an extra year, but there's nothing being really said about that. So, but I think since he's been at Newcastle again, when when he was un- when it was under Rafa, he's, he had a good season in in, in uh, Rafa's last season, and then obviously the two seasons under Steve Bruce, better, be- probably better last like. The last season, but this season or the end of this season, obviously, 
only seen glimpses of uh, a good Fabian share, but you never know. I'll be quite happy. I'll be quite content with him being still, still being at Newcastle next season. But um, yeah, yeah it, what a cool penalty! <laughs> it was so he, cool. Do you reckon he'll be Switzerland's penalty taker at the Euros? <laughs> if he is, we uh, well, hopefully we don't play him. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. Uh, we have the Irish Iniesta as our last substitution, and uh, Liam has gone already with uh, non applicable. I quite agree with that. I think he only had ten minutes, so. It's kind of the borderline non-applicable, yeah. but um, came on and done a job. And we need to see a better Jeff Hendrick next year. You know, I know he came as a free signing, but it's you know he has he has chipped in with a couple of goals, but the performances certainly haven't been up there. So yeah, we need a better Jeff Hendrick next season. Right, Steve Bruce. Now, obviously, is it Liam? This isn't a mark on Steve Bruce for the whole season. This is just on today's performance. Everyone yeah. was saying after the national break that Fulham v Newcastle will guarantee to be a relegation decider at Craven Cottage. It wasn't. It was probably one of the last games selected by the TV companies because it had nothing on it. But it was still a game of football. It was still a game of football that we wanted to win and we have won the game. Yeah. And, you know, it's a good end to the season with a with a good performance away from home. Yeah, it was obviously any wins. <laughs> like, we won, I think we won sort of comfortably, do you know what I mean? We weren't really challenged that much. Um, obviously, my Ma- was going to send her down, but obviously... Son of the League One, so that's all that matters. But um, <laughs> I think the only critique I've got of Steve Bruce today is I, I wish I seen more youngsters in. Like I'm sure Matty Longstaff was on the bench, so he brings Jeff Hendrick on. Um, yeah. And I thought he could have mixed it up. Do you know what I mean? Um, he, he could have put so many different players in that team because realistically, the last two games have just been a waste. Like. They could have got so much experience out of starting, starting not even being on the bench and then coming on for like that five, ten minutes. Obviously, Wednesday, he was forced into most of his changes because of injury. But, um, yeah, I think I'll give him a seven for the day. I think it would have been a lot hot. I think I would have liked to see a few more youngsters, but kind of really, he, he's won the day, so... I would, really I would, yeah, well, I would have given him an eight. Um, I would have given him an eight. So we'll go in the middle, we'll go seven and a half um, for today's performance. Um Look, it's um, it's a it's a funny one with Steve Bruce, isn't it? Because everybody wanted him out. I think I'd be, I'd be, I think ninety nine point nine percent of Newcastle fans wanted him out. I think I think the only I think the only other Newcastle fan who didn't want him out was probably lying to you. So, <laughs> um, yeah, it's look, give credit where credit's due. Yeah. End of this, apart from the Arsenal performance, so after the Brighton game, we played Aussie Spurs. From Spurs to the end of the season, the only performance that you can really criticise Steve Bruce is that Arsenal performance at home. Yeah. You know, there's, there's been games that Spurs, Liverpool, we should never have got... Put, we, we've got some great points there. Leicester, what a performance that was. You know, Sheffield United, a good, a good performance, a, well, a good-ish performance, you know, won the game. Um, Burnley, West Ham, big, yeah. big wins now for Newcastle and, you know, safe for another season. So, a good end of the season. I, I would think he will still be manager at the start of next season because I, I, I don't because I don't it's, it's hard to say with this takeover because again a lot more people with more information will know this is going to go in Newcastle's favour. You no know, Newcastle's luck, it's probably not going to go in our favour. I don't know that for sure. Liam doesn't know that for sure. No one on the channel does. But if it does, brilliant. Yeah. Um, but so I, I do expect him to be Newcastle manager next season. Liam, do you? Oh, definitely. I think. Um... The only way Bruce will go is if he if he gets sacked. You know, what I mean, I don't think he's ever going to resign and walk away. Or because um, I think the, the the there was something in his contract if he kept up, I think that he would trigger an automatic extension. So he's done that job. Do you know, what I mean, we're twelfth. Um, we just need to progress now. I think I think Bruce's problem is he, he 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 gets the football right. He's getting the football right on the pitch at the moment. Obviously, we're winning and playing semi well, and then he goes in interviews and like with talk sport and he just undoes everything he's just done on the pitch do you know what I mean when he's like trying to blame the fans for everything obviously he's got his spat with Craig Cole which seems to be going on and on and I, th- I think he, he he just needs to keep his mouth shut and just just let the football do the talking do you know what I mean like we, we can't go back to that dross that we we're, 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 we're lost 12 games on the bounce do you know what I mean we could have been in a was it a, a semi-final of a cup if we beat Brentford yeah. and we, we got absolutely battered by them so so just he needs to pick the right players in the summer um, just saying, like we need, we need. If, if there's no point signing Gale because Gale's Gale's a championship. He's probably one of the best players in the championship, but he's he's not what we need. So we do need a lot of investment in the summer, but it depends where we will get it. And I think 
I think it depend on who we sign, Max, he might not even stay. Do you know what I mean? I think he'll be he'll go late in the summer, if I'm being honest, if he goes. So be interesting, very big summer. Someone called it Gymontic. <laughs> so you'll work out who that was. Um, talking about him, Lee Lawler's up next. He's got the last word with the Fulham nil Newcastle United 2. He'll be talking all things Newcastle United finishing in 12th place. Who would have even thought that about a month ago? But it ha- it, that's ha- where Newcastle have finished after a good end to the season. Um, like this video, if you agree with mine and Liam's score in the player rating. So I thank everybody that's been watching the videos over the season because... It's been a long season. Hopefully, we we'll get to do these videos outside St James's Park because, you know, who doesn't like to see these sort of videos outside football grounds? Because it has been a long season with doing them inside te- uh, studios or rooms or you know people with dressing gowns and stuff like that. <laughs> so it, it's been a long, long season. But yeah, make sure you stay tuned with Newcastle Fans TV in the next two, three minutes. Lee Lawler will be live for the last word. Liam, thank you very much for today. No worries, mate. Any time. So for myself and Liam, the only 29 boys, we'll see you all very, very soon. ta